2, a young Gracie Hart courageously intervened in a playground altercation to protect a boy she had feelings for from a menacing bully. Unfortunately, her noble act took an unexpected turn when the boy, feeling embarrassed by being rescued by a girl, responded with rude rejection. In her frustration, Gracie resorted to giving him a swift punch to the nose before quietly retreating to nurse her wounded pride. Eighteen years later, Gracie had transformed into a formidable special agent within the Federal Bureau of Investigation. In the midst of a sting operation targeting Russian mobsters, however, she defied her superior's directives to rescue a mob boss who seemed to be choking, inadvertently leading to one of her fellow agents getting shot. As a consequence of her actions, Gracie was demoted to a desk job. Shortly thereafter, the agency received a letter from the infamous domestic terrorist known solely as The Citizen, warning of a bomb threat targeting the upcoming 75th annual Miss United States Beauty Pageant in San Antonio, Texas. Gracie's partner Eric Matthews, who assumed the leadership of the operation, leaned on her recommendations. One of Gracie's proposals involved embedding an agent undercover at the event, aiming to secure a position within the top five contestants to gain comprehensive access to the pageant's inner workings. However, when none of the potential candidates met the criteria, Eric recommended that Gracie herself assume the role stepping in to replace Miss New Jersey, who was slated for disqualification. Beauty pageant coach Victor Melling embarked on the task of instructing Gracie in the art of dressing, walking, and comporting herself as a genuine pageant contestant. Initially taken aback by the rigorous training, Gracie eventually grew to admire Victor's meticulous guidance. She made her debut in the pageant as Gracie Lou Freebush and formed a close friendship with Cheryl Fraser, the reigning Miss Rhode Island. Amid the pageant preparations, Gracie and Eric unexpectedly began developing admiration for each other, but they always choose to ignore what they feel. One night, Gracie and Victor had a disagreement when she refused to cooperate during their rehearsal. I don't appreciate your immaturity when I'm working as hard as I am. What's the big deal? It's fixed. I'm in the top five. Congratulations to me. Is that enough? Have you no pride in yourself, in your presentation? I'm an FBI agent, right? I'm not a performing monkey in heels. You're also a person, and an incomplete one at that. In place of friends and relationships, you have sarcasm and a gun. Oh, I have sarcasm? When every word that comes out of your mouth is dripping with disdain? That is because I am a miserable, grumpy elitist, and that works for me. I don't have relationships because I don't want them. And I don't have friends because I work 24-7. And you have no idea why I am the way that I am. Gracie ran to Eric to tell him she's quitting. For the last three days, I feel like I'm completely lost. Give yourself a break and cut Vic some slack. 
Because if they see what I see, then they'll love you. So, what do you say? Okay. I won't let you down. Good. That's what I want to hear. In all honesty, I might let you down. But I'll try my best not to. He laughed and then pulled her into the pool. Question and answer came and everyone got the same answer to the question, what is the one most important thing our society needs? I would have to say world peace. Definitely world peace. That's easy. World peace. World peace. What is the one most important thing our society needs? That would be harsher punishment for parole violators, Stan. Everyone was silent. And world peace. She added and the audience cheered. Simultaneously, a number of suspects emerged on the radar, with Kathy Morningside, the current competition director and a former pageant victor, taking the spotlight, along with her assistant Frank Tobin and the seasoned MC Stan Fields. Cheryl, too, raised suspicion due to her past involvement as a radical animal rights activist. Gracie invited Cheryl and their fellow contestants for a night of pizza, beer, and revelry, hoping to unearth information about Cheryl's background. There, she and the other girls grew a lot closer to each other as they enjoyed bonding and girl talk. That evening, her inquiries inadvertently led to the revelation from others that Kathy's own history as a pageant participant was dubious. This included the startling revelation that she had won her crown after the leading contestant suddenly fell ill with food poisoning. Gracie became convinced that Kathy might be a copycat of the citizen. But when she relayed her suspicions to Eric and the rest of the team, she was informed that the citizen had been apprehended on an unrelated charge. Consequently, as there appeared to be no imminent threat, their supervisor decided to terminate the mission. Despite Eric and the team's skepticism, Gracie remained steadfast in her belief that something was amiss. In the end, her request to stay was declined and Eric did not do anything about it, despite being the team's lead. You know what? I don't care what you do. You want to stay, stay. But as a private citizen, turn in your badge and you're gone. When the other agents started packing. Don't look at me like I betrayed you. Betrayal implies action. You stood there. You got nothing to go on. I know everyone thinks I'm a screw up, but I feel like I'm in the right place at the right time. I have to protect those girls. It is my job. Part of doing the job is following orders. The other part is using your brain. Throw out the rule book. I like the book. I like knowing what I can and cannot do. You're not the only one who lives for the job. I want to keep mine for the next 20 or 30 years. Jesus, heart, give it a rest. Disappointed, she handed him her badge and gun. Don't do this. Meanwhile, Kathy was busy reenacting her crowning moment when Frank, who was revealed to be her son, entered the room. The two talk about Kathy writing threatening letters. The next day, Gracie pleaded Victor to stay, but he had to refuse because that's what the FBI mandated him. 
Before leaving, he expressed, I've never been prouder of myself or of any girl I have ever coached. You are truly unique. If I ever had a daughter, I imagine that she would be something like you, which is why I never reproduced. Having no coach and makeup artist, Gracie struggled to prepare for the coronation night. Good thing, the other candidates helped her. As they departed for home, Victor disclosed to Eric that Frank was, in fact, Kathy's son, a piece of information they had concealed from the FBI due to his criminal history. Driven by this revelation, Eric made the decision to return to Texas with Victor and assist Gracie in continuing the investigation, even though it went against their orders. As you may know, there are many who consider the Miss United States pageant to be outdated and anti-feminist. What would you say to them? I would have to say, I used to be one of them. And then I came here and I realized that these women are smart, terrific people who are just trying to make a difference in the world. We've become really good friends. For me, this experience has been one of the most rewarding and liberating experiences of my life. My God, I did it. And if anyone tries to hurt one of my new friends, I would take them out. I would make them suffer so much, they'd wish they were never born. And if they ran, I would hunt them down. Thank you, Kathy. A brief, shining moment, and then that mouth. In a moment of revelation, Gracie suddenly realized that Frank had assumed the identity of the citizen to orchestrate the pageant bomb threat and that the explosive device was concealed within the crown itself. She, however, was not able to communicate it properly. During the final round, Gracie was announced as the first runner-up and the title of Miss United States was bestowed upon Cheryl as she prepared to accept the tiara. In a heart-pounding climax, Gracie engaged in a fierce struggle with Cheryl for control of the rigged crown, while Eric grappled with Frank, who was on the brink of detonating the bomb. At last, with sheer determination, Gracie managed to hurl the tiara towards the stage scenery, triggering a massive explosion that engulfed the stage in flames. With Kathy and Frank taken into custody, Gracie unraveled their sinister plot of seeking revenge for Kathy's expulsion from the Miss United States organization by planning to assassinate the pageant winner on stage. In the aftermath of the ordeal, Eric mustered the courage to ask Gracie out on a date. I was thinking, when we get back, after we write up our reports and you get all of me again, Maybe we could have dinner? Subsequently, Eric and Victor orchestrated a clever ruse to lure Gracie to the pageant's farewell breakfast. There, the newly crowned Miss United States, Cheryl, surprised Gracie by naming her Miss Congeniality, an acknowledgement of her exceptional character and bravery. I never thought anything like this would happen to me. I kind of hoped it wouldn't. But now that it has, I just want to say that I'm very, very honored. And moved. And truly touched. And I really do want world peace.
Miss Congeniality is a 2000 comedy film directed by Donald Petrie and featuring Sandra Bullock in the lead role of Gracie Hart. This movie blends humor, action, and a touch of romance to create an enjoyable cinematic experience. In the film, Gracie Hart is a no-nonsense FBI agent renowned for her toughness and lack of traditional femininity. However, she is reluctantly drafted to go undercover as a contestant in the Miss United States beauty pageant in order to thwart a potential bomb threat. With the guidance of her pageant coach, Victor Melling, played by Michael Caine, Gracie undergoes a transformation to fit the pageant mold. Sandra Bullock's portrayal of Gracie Hart stands out as one of the film's highlights. Her impeccable comedic timing and seamless transitions between Grace's tough FBI persona and her more pageant-friendly persona are commendable. Bullock infuses the character with both humor and warmth. The movie is replete with humorous moments, especially as Gracie navigates the unfamiliar terrain of beauty pageants. Her fish-out-of-water predicament leads to numerous comedic scenarios, including the memorable singing in the rain talent performance. Additionally, the witty exchanges between Gracie and Victor Melling contribute to the overall humor. Miss Congeniality imparts a message of empowerment and the importance of challenging stereotypes. Grace's character arc revolves around embracing her true self and dispelling the notion that being tough and competent necessitates sacrificing her femininity or conforming to societal expectations. The film boasts a stellar supporting cast, including Michael Caine, Benjamin Bratt, Candice Bergen, and William Shatner. Each actor adds to the film's humor and overall charm. While primarily a comedy, Miss Congeniality features action sequences, particularly during the film's climax. These scenes inject excitement and tension into the story. The movie includes a subtle romantic subplot involving Gracie and her colleague Eric, Benjamin Bratt. While not the central focus, their chemistry adds a dash of romance to the narrative. Throughout the film, there is a playful satirical element that pokes fun at the world of beauty pageants, shedding light on the superficial aspects and cutthroat competition often associated with such events. This satirical tone is woven throughout the movie while maintaining a light and humorous atmosphere. In summary, Miss Congeniality is an entertaining and light-hearted comedy that showcases Sandra Bullock's comedic prowess and delivers an uplifting message about self-acceptance and challenging societal norms. Although not groundbreaking, it remains a popular choice for those seeking an enjoyable and feel-good cinematic experience. Thank you for watching our movie synopsis. Be sure to click the subscribe, like, and notification bell to receive reminders of our next movie synopsis here on Bento's Storybox. See you next time, or at the movies.